school. <laughs> we are streaming live now, so we should be good to oh, go. Oh, there it comes. Thank you, Dion. You're welcome. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting to order. I lost my clock. I'm assuming it's about 10.06. 10.35, sir. Oh, that's right. We're 10.30 meeting. I'm, I'll be glad when we change all those to the same time, hopefully. All right. I don't have any announcements or uh, anything else at this point. I know we're redoing the committees and we're going to start working in new directions going forward. Uh, I'm assuming our budget's going to be approved on the 16th by the county. Is that what you're hearing, Helen? Yes. Well, okay. I can't. I, I mean, there's still. We're assuming some, it's going to be. The, some of the commissioners still have some questions, um, and I'm assuming it's going to pass, but I can't promise you that. Is it on our budget or on theirs? Theirs. Okay. So ours is pretty much going to go as is. I don't see where we can make a lot of changes. Right. But. Um, and we are balanced. Yay. So, you know, I don't think our budget's going to affect your budget. Okay. Good to hear. All right. Uh, with all that being said, let's get to Mr. Hall's presentation. I saw you on there somewhere, Charles. There you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning. Uh, Thank you. Good morning. Hopefully Good morning. see my screen. I'm trying to work through the alarm and the presentation at the same time. <laughs> uh, we don't see it yet. Okay. What about now? Oh, yeah. There you are. Yep. All right. Um, as you know, once we uh, had the uh, public transit agency safety plan uh, approved back in December, we are now uh, mandated to up dated annually, and we've gone through that process. I got with the uh, technical center from uh, Federal Transportation Administration for some recommendations. I've been with them uh, a couple of times back and forth for what they recommend. They say most of it was just uh, just a little uh, contextual uh, work that needed to be done, especially since it was the first uh, update. The initial plan, uh, as I indicated, had already been approved. And so what we are now doing is going back and, and making some revisions based on their recommendations. Um, some of the things we looked at, I did some redlining and some uh, highlighting. Uh, some of the things that we did was just some modifications to verbiage. I had to add some things as well. Um, one of the things you'll see, I think you've already gotten copies of the red line version. We'll have to go back and update the table of contents because once we go back in it and make the reserva uh, res the uh, revisions and have them approved, that obviously affects the table of contents. Um, they're also recommending that a board, uh, that the board itself add a memo to the plan to uh, acknowledging their approval of the plan that had not been done previously. Um, there's also not only going through the process of approvals and there will be others as we move through uh, the revision process over the years. So what they're recommending is, uh, let me go back previous, uh, to approve a table. I've inserted a table in the document that is one that's actually highlighted because that is a, an addition as opposed to a revision. And what that will do is enable us an opportunity to have all of the uh, individuals involved in the revision to sign the document as it goes through the process each year. Um, one of the things that I also did was I had to change the CEO's name to reflect uh, leadership now. Uh, one of the other recommendations that they made was to add the names to the uh, positions of accountability. Before I just had the actual positions, so I went back and added the names to the document of the individuals in those respective uh, positions. Uh, one other enhancement that the uh, recommend was that I add a uh, safety performance target coordination uh, part to it. And what that does is once we make the revisions to the plan that we disseminated to GDOT as well as the Metropolitan Planning Commission. The initial plan had also been disseminated, but there was just not a part to actual document the dissemination 
uh, of the document to those agencies outside of just the, the email itself. So I went back in and outlined who receives it and how that process works. Uh, another enhancement that they recommend was adding the PTASP implementation plan. And as you see, that is also red line and highlighted in the document or in the board packet that you have. It shows how we plan to implement the actual plan as well as the subsequent revisions. And then one other minor change that was added was uh, changing the hazard mitigation to safety risk mitigation. Uh, outside of that, the only other thing that I had was the, uh, which is a part of the safety management system was the communication of it. Uh, they say because of the size of agency we had, we did not do it, but I still am going to move forward and continue to do that because I still think that's uh, pretty important to make sure that everyone within the organization knows the safety plan and how it works and the integral parts of it. So I'm going to continue to uh, make sure that we are constantly communicating uh, the changes of the safety plan internally as needed. And for the most part, that's all we have in terms of the initial revisions. Are there any questions? Uh, I actually have two. Are we going to be doing this as a renewal in July of every year now? Yeah, I think it's about the new points. Even though we voted on it in December? Yes. And, okay. And uh, one other change I'd like to see made on page 18. Okay. To delete the references to score. Okay. That was, that's no longer our management structure. I know, don't know if Valerie has something she wants to add there, but that can go. All right, we'll do. Yeah. I think that one's dead. <laughs> and Mr. Hall, uh, Mr. Cooksey and I, we will get together and discuss that in detail. I didn't know, um, we, we did um, ponder that initially, and um, we didn't know if it would adversely affect because the way it was presented initially, that was part of it when it was initially presented to the board. So we didn't want to, uh, I guess, uh, remove it. And the board had already approved the document rather than making these revisions or things that the FDA had advised us or recommended us to do. So we, we weren't removing anything because it had already been approved by the board. Yeah, well, if we're gonna reapprove it this month, eliminating that shouldn't be a problem. Yes, sir. We're going forward with a new management plan. Yes, sir. Thank you. You can exit out. <laughs> <laughs> it's only one paragraph from what I remember. It was. Yeah, that's an easy one. Click and click and delete. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Mr. Hall. Any other questions for Charles while he, he's still on screen? Helen, Tabitha, Clinton, no, I see you're here too, if you have any questions. No, I think it's just good that we review it each year. Yeah, a lot of these things, you know, the federal government changes stuff constantly. And with a new administration, the new Secretary of Transportation, we're probably going to see other changes come in. And when we get through our triennial, we'll probably see the stuff they propose changing. So there will be other changes for sure. Right. They get paid to make changes. They don't get paid to <laughs> the status quo. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, let's move on to proposed agenda items. I guess you're going to do that one, Val. No, actually, Mr. Cooksey is available to provide that. Um... Oh, yeah, I did see Lenny. Where is there? He is. Yes. yes, sir. I'm right here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, so this is our, uh, our standard COVID uh, emergency measures. No changes here. I know, uh, Dr. Halloran, we had spoken about um, potentially. Uh, just having this extended until September, I uh, didn't know if that was um, the consensus, so I just added it, you know, this month, uh, and then you can determine if we're we're going to do that. Um, other than that, there are no changes, uh, you know, currently to that. Um, so, you know, obviously any uh, changes, uh, operational changes, or things within, of course, you'll be definitely notified. Um, but so far, um, you know, we've been maintaining. Uh, I will say just to kind of shift gears a little bit, the organization did a pretty good job 
recently, you know, we were part of the uh, ops briefing webinars for uh, Hurricane or Tropical Storm Elsa. So we participated in those and also internally, we had several meetings and I would say, you know, everybody was very responsive and, uh, uh, and we were, uh, you know, prepared in the event we had to do uh, any um, evacuation or anything of that nature. So it was a good trial run for us to just to kind of get a good feel of, of, of what's to come. So I just wanted to let you know, operationally, I mean, that's the entire organization. Everybody was dialed in and, and uh, aware of their role. Um, so we got a chance to disseminate our plan out again and uh, everybody having, having an opportunity to be prepared for that. So um, other than that, I have you know, nothing else to, re to, to report. Do we do an annual uh, adoption of that uh, hurricane plan? Uh, no, I, I'd have to go back and get your, uh, t honestly, to take a look and see the last time uh, that that had come forward. Do you, do you know any dates on that, Val? We don't have any specific dates, but it is a custom to review it annually at right. before the beginning of hurricane season. Yeah, in case there's any changes now with the electric buses and other things that are added in. Sure. Uh, if I may, uh, we did do that. That was the time that we actually went to Statesboro and actually visited the site that we would actually move the buses to. That was a part of the revision. It has not changed any of the text of the plan itself, but we do look at the plan uh, systemically and regularly to make sure that we're consistent and current what we say we're doing. Yeah, I just think if you add a board approval, it would it gives it more credence that everybody is aware. I did have a question. I did go by Statesboro. That's that looks like a decent spot. What? Uh, who's going to move the generator in the event that the electric buses have to go? That would that's, actually that's on a trailer. Does, is there a company that's going to transport that for us to whatever location it needs to go? Yeah, our goal is that we would be able to transport that. Uh, we have several uh, maintenance technicians and, and operators who have CDL license. Uh, Do we have a vehicle big we enough? Would have, we, have, we have that in our plan that we'd be able to uh, lease that vehicle well ahead of time. And okay. So, so we'd be able to back in and hook up. So that's all part of the, all part of our plan and what we've you know, thought out well in advance. Good. Yeah, that's important because that that's a two million dollar piece of equipment. <laughs> that's right. I mean, the buses we can we can get out easily. We have enough drivers, but that generator is a, a very large asset. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we still have the same plan with pick up at the Civic Center and drop off. And yes, sir. Everything is still the, in place. And the school is going to continue to assist in moving people with the school buses? And I can't address that definitely, but that's that's as far as we know, nothing has changed in regards okay. to that. To right. that I, I know they've cut back on some of the transportation. I don't know if it's because of lack of drivers or- It is. Know. It is, yes. I spoke with Dr. Levette a couple of weeks ago and they are looking to hire immediately at least 60 operators. Yeah, so, so are we, but yes. <laughs> are they out there? And they're CDL also, aren't they? They bus drivers yeah. from the yeah. schools. Right. Yes. We're competing for those those individuals. So yeah. you, them, and the ports. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And that yes. port expansion is gonna dig in pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Sure will. All right. What was next <laughs> of capital projects? Who was Who's got that, that one? Brand. That's me. Oh, there's Bren. I, I hear her. There she is. <laughs> I got 12 of us on the screen. I have to look <laughs> around and see who's she Good morning. This morning, you got emailed an updated copy of the 5307 project list that we have, um, we are proposing in-house. You know about 5307. Um, it's an urbanized area formula funding that makes federal resources available to urbanized areas for transit capital and operating assistance in urbanized areas and also for transportation related planning. In FY21, federal uh, FY21, we were allocated 50, uh, I'm sorry, we were allocated, where's my number? $3.8 million. And so, we are fortunate, as we've been discussing, and you all know, 
uh, we have been using these 5307 funds historically for uh, 50% match of operating expenses. But uh, since we have received stimulus funding and the board approved in March of this year to use to pay for operating expenses at 100% match for fiscal year 22 through the CRISA funding. So that opens up this $3.8 million pot of funding um, for us to spend on other projects. Super exciting. Um, we went through as a staff and we brainstormed through cross department evaluation process, looking at the strategic plan, the transit asset management plan, internal needs throughout the authority, and the local match requirements. And we came up with the proposed list that you have in front of you for federal 21, federal year 21, uh, 5307 funds. And you can see we've got a lot of great projects on this list. It's very exciting to see things being able to move forward really because of that stimulus funding that we got and that we're using on operating expenses. So you can see we've got a couple plans here. We've got the electric bus rollout plan. We've got the transit development plan, which is already in process um, not needing this funds, but we can use uh, funds to, to complete it in FY22. Um, and again, we've got some technology upgrades, super exciting. We're looking at HR and finance modules, some admin modules, website upgrade, uh, ITS additions to our new ITS system. We've got radio, two-way radios um, it, it, with their technology and a bus flow air project parking lot improvements, which we've been talking about for a while now. So that's super exciting. Some more maintenance projects like in ground lifts, painting the exterior of both facilities and some additional facilities mods with security. So we've come up with this list. You can see the approximate totals and um, we're, we're proposing that this is how we spend these funds. Uh, keep in mind that FY22 funds should be announced to this fall. So we'll have another pot of money. In addition to uh, once the um, federal government brings out the regulations with the ARPA funds, the American Rescue Plan, um, that will have additional funds for us that we can use on capital projects. So we know, um, A, we've got a plan for what we can do with these funds, and B, we have more funds coming in and that we will continue to be formulating our plans with. Any questions for me? I just had a couple of thoughts. Um, where in there is Beverly's office upgrade? <laughs> that one is actually already covered in facilities okay. mod <laughs> in the current grant. So we've got it, we've got it written down. Neat. And the when, other one, when is it when is it happening? Yeah, that's because she's in that little shoebox. It makes me claustrophobic to go in there. I oh, know. We, we actually have a meeting with two designers on. I think it's next Wednesday or Thursday. Um, one at ten and one at eleven. I uh, one at one to uh, discuss that. So okay, yeah, because yeah, that, like that almost that almost seems like we, with a desk. <laughs> well, it almost seems like we subjecting her to hostile work environment. <laughs> well, I offer this office to her at all times. She's always welcome to come in here. But I understand she, your. She what never you're saying. complains. I'm the one who complains yes, like uh, every month <laughs> when I had to go in there. She doesn't yeah. complain. She doesn't. It seems horrible. like they could just move that wall. But but we we're following the process, and uh, as I said, we'll be having those meetings next week, and then we can decide which firm we're going to use to to move forward with the redesign. Yeah, because we've been asking that to be done since Curtis. So what's that, four years? Pretty much since I've been on the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it's moving. It's, it's moving. And it's moving. Okay. Believe me. We're going to believe gonna that one. <laughs> it's going to happen. Well, we don't we, we we believe you, but. <laughs> I believe it. It's going to happen. We have trust. Please uh, the other trust. thing, I've been at uh, where they have those uh, scanners now for temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we were looking at them, Charles. I think you mentioned it to me last time I was in there. Um, we the have other them. Thing, we have them. Yes, we sir. Do. 
awesome. we have them on site and they they're are so great on. you just lean in and says fine go yeah. yeah ours are super cool actually they can ask you a question and i can do thumbs up or thumbs down and it knows the oh. answer and got lots of cool technology involved in there. i gotta stop in and check those out <laughs> those are cool things the other thing i have and i don't know whether it's been involved is having a uh, buzzer lock system on the main door in the cat mm. on Gwinnett where the person at the desk is protected and no one can come in until they buzz them in. They don't have that already? No, we no, don't. We that don't. door, you just go right on through. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah that's I, not good. No, and it's a it's a reasonably simple system. It's just a lock mechanism on the door with a button on yes, the inside. So, yeah, whoever banging on the door can be checked out before they're let in. Yeah, we, we have, have it. We have it on Oglethorpe. No. Yes, we. Uh, no, actually, that's a key card. Yes. Uh, activated. If you have your ID card, you can get in. But that doesn't mean someone can't follow in right behind you before the door closes. And I know maintenance in the, has... In the, in, the, in the time of absolute crazy, we should probably be thinking about how that could be better. And we will. Yeah, um, these, are, these are minor or just updates. Yes, yes. It's literally just a buzzer alarm that says, come on in. Otherwise, no, this way, you know, I was... My thought was a plexiglass, bulletproof plexiglass at the main entrance where just like the banks where you come in, they identify you and then let you in if they're. So does that mean that we don't have panic buttons? No, no, I don't think no, so. ma'am. No, no. We, we currently do not. Oh my God. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. We don't have to yeah. have at least a panic button. Yeah, we are going to get one. <laughs> but yeah, I think the bulletproof glass and, you know, even if it's that little window so they can put the mail in or whatever or one of those slide out trays like bank shoes. I mean, protecting the employees has to be number one. I don't know why I just assumed that we had that. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't go in the building that often. So we don't always, I mean, I didn't notice a lot of it until, um, tell you what, until the shooting incident, I didn't think much about it at all. But, you know, once, Curtis and Beverly told me to get it and get my car and get out of the way. There's an sh active shooter in the neighborhood. <laughs> I kind of put my mind on a little different uh, path. Yes, but those are definitely small fixes that we can implement. Uh, at, I'm hoping at very little cost, but we will we will investigate the cost and let you know. Yeah, I don't think they're going to cost us billions, but you know, safety is safety. Either. And, you know, I know we have some other lock off areas in the building, but that main entrance is, you know, a lot of people come in and out of that. Mm -hmm. The other thing they should check, and I mentioned this, I think, a while back, is the airflow systems, particularly in the waiting area. It is 10 degrees cooler out in that front room. Now we're, and we're bringing in handicapped people, and at that time we were they were sitting out there in that cold, but the air conditioning is not balanced very well. I I was told it was looked at, but there was no actual recommendation to correct it. Um, yes, that's something we can look at when we get a next uh, fix the building fund. I mean, these other yes, priorities are pretty high up on the list. So safety first, the air, you know, I don't know why it's set up that way. I'm sure there's individual units on the roof that are working different areas, but there are, I don't know what can, where are the controls for all that? <laughs> um, I actually don't know, Dr. Halloran. I actually do not know. Yeah, because there has to be some way to set the temperatures in the different, I mean, I'm sure we have multiple uh, zones in the building. They're not all one zone. Um, That's true. We're, we're experiencing that right now with no air conditioning in this part of the, of the uh, building. But 
These yeah, which means you have people. one unit for your office area. And right, right. I haven't, I've never seen a thermostat that reads the temperatures, at least not that I've ever seen on a wall in CAT. So mm. somewhere, somehow, those temperatures are set. <laughs> Uh, I don't know who did it or when, but it's always been cold in that waiting area. Yes, you're right. You're right. And the person at the <laughs> desk guess. always has a coat on, <laughs> which, which is the first side. Of, of course, I think when they did that, they, you know, you do measurements based on the size of the space, windows, uh, other things. And with changes being done, like blocking off part of it for Beverly's cave over there. It may have changed those dynamics. So we may need a, a HVAC engineer to come in and look at it. But yeah, there has to be thermostats somewhere in the that controls those because they have to be set to a temperature to bring the units on and off based on the internal temperature. Well, I know Mr. Boatwright, who's our maintenance director, has mentioned um, on occasion that um, he was bringing in an HVAC or a company to look at what could be done for that airflow. And right now, as we discuss these options for uh, redesign, I think this is the, the best time to do that. Yeah, I think I just, I did remember, I did speak to Steve about it a while yes. back and he said they someone did come in and look at it years ago and didn't see any way to correct it. I'm, but that's, that's, not a, that's not an answer from an HVAC people. Yes. There's always a way to correct it. Yes, yes. And I'll definitely include that as, uh, as we discuss the specs with the uh, building redesigners next week. I'll yes. definitely include that. Yeah, because there's they might be able to move some vents up there. They're going to have to put one in Beverly's new office space because she doesn't have one. Mm -hmm. And there's, I haven't seen any return registers either <laughs> from what I can remember. So I don't know how it's all set up there. You know, the things you think about and look at, especially yes. when it's 90 degrees and humid. All of a sudden, air conditioning is a major priority. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. In addition, I can make an edit before it goes to the final committee for that facilities mods. And instead of calling it a camera upgrade, I can call it security upgrades. And then we can include some of those additional things that y'all have. Um, that would be on. great. Yeah. Like I said, that's that neighborhood is okay. After the shooting incident, I'm not so wild. I, I park as close to the door as I can. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I understand. I understand your concerns. Yeah. And, and, we, and we'll definitely, definitely look at implementing these new measures very, very soon. Right. And I think the, the last one here is the PTASP. And I, Charles already did his presentation. So... We'll move that along to vote in at the board meeting. Yes, sir. Uh, any old or new business? No, sir. Um, I'm trying to figure out uh, what the chairman wants to do about voting on our uh, CEO search committee recommendation for who is going to do the job but we, it's not on our agenda. Maybe we can put it on for governance next week and vote on that and make it an open invite to all the board members to be there at 1030 to discuss that before governance starts. Okay, would you like me to, to uh, note that as an agenda item or would you like to speak with the chairman first or? Yeah, I would check with uh, Mr. Cody, see how he wants to do it. I mean, we could wait to the board meeting, but that's two more weeks. And we pretty much, four of us are pretty much on board with who we're gonna be using. So, but officially we have to vote on it because of the amount of the expenditure. It was uh, sent out as an RFQ or RFP, I forgot which. All right, I'll, I'll contact Chairman Cody. Yeah, yeah just so we, we can set up a time to vote on it officially. Yeah, we want to get them on board and get the contract signed because that's going to take time too. It has to be written, approved, signed by the attorneys. And I believe the chairman, I signed the last one. So someone officially has to sign it from the board. Right, because um, the one firm, one firm was 
Yes. And we want to let them know. We don't want to keep them hanging, thinking that, you know, oh, maybe we're going to use you, maybe we're not. That's just good business to not, uh, you know, make it look like we're dodging a bullet or something. So, I'll contact him today. Yeah, I think that would work out if that's okay with him. All right. Uh, just as a note on that, then, the... Uh, Governance meeting is on July 20th. Our full board meeting is on the 27th at 10 o'clock. The governance committee is at 11. And if we do the vote, it'll be uh, technically an emergency board meeting on the 20th for CEO search vote. All right. All I'm right. Up, I'm up to 13 now. We got quite a crowd here. <laughs> Any other questions uh, from anybody on? It's pretty much an open forum at this point. But I think we're, I'm hoping next month we get this down to uh, like we thought we would do with one major presentation for the staff and then breakout rooms for the individual committees. I think we're still working on that. Yes, sir. I, I haven't really uh, received any comments or uh, suggestions from other members of the board. So we would hope that if other members of the board that are present today have any um, thing that they would like to add to that, if they're in agreement with that format, or they would like to, to run it by uh, uh, Mr. Butler and Andrew as well. We just want to make sure that everything is set up as it should be. Yeah, we can set that up with Chairman Cody because the, the committees need to start working on their actual assignments going forward. And we've already submitted the budget for this year. So a big part of our committee has completed its work. But you got to all, you know, by December, we'll be working on next year's budget. <laughs> yes, that's, that's true. It's, a, that's it's true. a chronic process that never goes away. Yes. Okay. All right. If no one else has any questions, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thank everyone for being here. And uh, we'll see you in the next two weeks at the meetings. Thank you. Have Take a good care, day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.